Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Israel is calling for sanctions to be imposed on Iran's missile project after it launched an unprecedented attack on its territory. <laughs> A wave of missiles and drones were fired from Iran, Iraq, Syria and Yemen on Saturday, with most being downed by Israel and its allies. Israel's military chief of staff has said the attack will not go unanswered. Tehran says the attack was retaliation for the presumed Israeli airstrike on its consulate in Syria on April the 1st, in which 13 people were killed. Since the Israel-Gaza war erupted six months ago, Israel has ramped up its targeting of Iran over its funding and arming of Hamas. Denmark's historic Old Stock Exchange building in the centre of Copenhagen has been engulfed by fire. The 17th century Borsen is one of the city's oldest buildings and onlookers gasped as its iconic spire collapsed in the flames. Everyone inside the building was able to leave, and people rushed to rescue some of its historic paintings. Culture Minister Jakob Engel Schmidt said 400 years of Danish cultural heritage had gone up in flames. The building, dating back to 1625, is a stone's throw from Denmark's parliament, the Folketing, and the royal palace, Christiansburg. Australian police have declared Monday's stabbing at a Sydney church as a religiously motivated terrorist attack. A 16-year-old boy was arrested after a bishop, a priest and churchgoers were attacked during mass at the Assyrian Christ the Good Shepherd Church. At least four people suffered non-life-threatening injuries, police say. The attacker was also hurt. The incident was captured on a church live stream and quickly triggered unrest in the suburb of Waitley. I declared that it was a terrorist incident. Strike Force Petrina has been established to investigate that side of the events last night. There is no such thing in Australia in taking the law into your own hands. It doesn't exist. That's for several reasons. Firstly, you will be met by the full force of the law if there's any attempt for tit-for-tat violence in Sydney over the coming days. At least 39 people have been killed in Pakistan after days of unusually heavy rains battered the country's southwest. Some of those killed were farmers struck by lightning while harvesting wheat. Images online show swathes of farmland engulfed by rainwater. Flash floods have also disrupted power supplies and transportation networks. Pakistan has experienced an increase in extreme weather events as it grapples with the impacts of climate change. A colossal amount of water is moving towards the Russian city of Kurgan, the region's governor has said. Vadim Shumkov said that the swollen Tobol River and its tributaries had produced water levels twice those of the last major flood in 1994. Floods over the past two weeks have forced evacuations of tens of thousands of people from northern Kazakhstan and bordering areas of Russia. Waters are expected to rise as high as 36 feet above normal. Myanmar resistance fighters have burned the flag used by the military government and raised their own banner at a newly captured army base as a senior rebel commander vowed they would hold the strategic area near the Thai border. The celebrations by fighters linked to the armed ethnic Karen National Union came less than a week after the capture of Miawadi, a key trading town on Thailand's western border. And a scuffle erupted in Georgia's parliament as the leader of the opposition punched an MP. <laughs> MP Mamuka Umdinadze was speaking when opposition leader Aleko Elisashvili punched him during a debate over a controversial law. <laughs> there was then a melee involving dozens of lawmakers. Critics say the foreign influence bill is inspired by authoritarian laws neighboring Russia uses to crush dissent. <laughs> Thousands of protesters demonstrated in the Georgian capital Tbilisi on Monday, demanding the withdrawal of the bill. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.